Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Yes, I'm a few minutes early. <laughs> waiting for everyone to come in. I'm joined today from my hometown of Kawaro. We'll just wait for everyone to come in and say hi. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Say hello, say kia ora. Let me know if you can also hear me, if you can hear the guitar. Bless you all. Shea Sandrena Mako. God bless you all. Just wait for a few more people to join. <coughs> we just wait for a few more people to join. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We are live. Hello everyone, welcome, say good morning, please hit the thumbs up button if you are here, also please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, can hear you, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, can you hear the guitar, shakarabababa, shatakarabababa, thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say hello, family. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Can you hear me from here? Sunny, everyone knows Brother Sunny, Papa Iwani, <laughs> and my sister. This is my sister. This is my sister. <laughs> so we're just going to sing a song. But before we sing, I want to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you the praise. Let this worship be a sign of our love and our adoration for you, our King. Let our worship be heard from the depths of our hearts. From within our spirit. So we glorify your name, Father. Yes, I have a sister. <laughs> so I said, Apostle has a sister. Yeah, come and say, come and come with me, sister. Come, 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 come. Crawl across the bed, it's okay. There she is. <laughs> it's my sister. Uh -huh. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, we just give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. <clears throat> Today, as we are sharing and bringing the word from Kawaro. Oof. But I even feel like the atmosphere feels fresh today. It's like a fresh manna from heaven is falling from the realms. So, Father, we pray that you would pour out fresh manna upon your children today. As we are sanctified by you, the Holy Spirit, 
as your word renews us and separates our soul from our spirit. Let it divide, Father God, in separating our thoughts and, our, and judges the thoughts and the attitudes of our heart. Lord, thank you for your word today. You look like sisters. Okay, let me just make this clear. I have a sister, like a real sister. <laughs> She's my blood sister. <laughs> and yes, we do look like sisters. <laughs> I'm the better looking one of the two, okay? <laughs> Just joking. But it's true, no, no, no. <laughs> no, but Lord, we thank you for family. We thank you for family. We thank you for uh, our spiritual family. We thank you for our, 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 our natural family, who we were raised with. So Lord, we, we come and we stand in the gap for our unsaved family, friends, and members of our, of our family. So we stand in the gap. Your word says... Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. Everyone say good morning, Apostle Sister. <laughs> she's actually she's actually a counselor. Her name is Counselor Rowie, okay? She has authority in this place. So there's a reason why God put her in that place. Anyway, I digress, but it's a very good digression. So we're going to sing. I hope you guys are happy with that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days.
Father say come to me all you who are weary and heavily burdened and I will give you rest he is a God that gives us rest he is a God that brings peace the Prince of Peace and so today as we enter into this time of daily bread that the Lord would minister to your hearts as you surrender and you come to him if you are weary if you are heavily laden and heavily burdened the Lord says come to me and I will give you rest to me Come to me, come to me, come to me. 
us peace and I release the peace of God that surpasses all understanding as we guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus everything we do is for you and in you and through you and around you father for you are the author and the finisher you are the beginning and the end you are the alpha and the omega Holy Spirit Kerabashata release this impartation of peace today may peace be your portion today hallelujah who's feeling the peace of God if you're feeling the peace of God if you're feeling the presence of God right now I want you to hit me with a fire emoji let's see some fire up here We've got 42 people watching hallelujah could just sing sing all day and not do daily bread but we better do daily bread right <laughs> ah, you're feeling the fire you're feeling the presence of God hit me with fire there it is there it is you receive his peace praise God from Tepuke ah God bless you God bless you praise God I'm worshipping with you going up to the Tarawada Falls. Feels so good. Praise the Lord. As soon as you logged on. Praise God. God bless you all. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Daily Bread Unleashed. Daily Bread Unleashed on live on YouTube. If you are here, please do hit us with the thumbs up button. And also, please share this. If you invite one person and get one other person to subscribe, we will be able to reach more people and reach more people. Fire, fire, fire. Don't have emoji on this laptop. Praise God. You got another song in you, brother? I exalt thee. He's always got another song in him. For thou, O Oh, oh. 
So, Father, there is only one God who we exalt, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. If you love Jesus, type Jesus in the chat. <coughs> if you love Jesus, type Jesus in the chat. Shatakara Baba. Praise God. Oh, happy birthday, Ani Sean. <coughs> happy birthday, Ani Sean. <laughs> it's actually Uncle Sean, but we call him Ani Sean. Uh, well, the kids call him Auntie Sean because they can't say Uncle. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ani Sean. Do you love Jesus? Type Jesus. Well, I guess it won't be doing bread if I don't play the happy birthday song. <laughs> and it has to be the happy birthday song because they love it. Let me uh, keep finding, playing that tune till I find it, brother. Uh, you know, here on Daily Bread, we, we are not conformed to the patterns of this world, <coughs> but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Do you know how to play happy birthday? Shall we sing it? Yeah, let's sing it. You sing it. We're gonna sing happy birthday. Uh -huh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to happy you. Birthday. I was even going to get down in my, my diggers right here. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to get into the word. God bless you all. Oh, welcome, everybody. It's the remix. Okay. They called it the remix. <laughs> anyway, let me let me change my background. Well, do you guys still want to see them? Or do you want me to change it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'll leave it so that oh. I can see your guys' expressions. <laughs> <laughs> So if you need to, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, it's good. Okay. Philemon. Philemon. Thank you, Jesus. You guys good? Good morning, everybody. Do you want to move to the side, brother, so we can see you? And I'm not standing in front of you. Leave it. Okay. So everyone wants to see you guys. Daily bread on cup for reals. All right. Let me just make sure that you there. I'm literally standing at my sister's uh, drawers. There we go. That's better. Amen. Hallelujah. Reading the book of Philemon. Thank you, Jesus. All at the table. Everyone in the hall, have a seat. Okay, so this is an epistle of Paul. This is an epistle of Paul to Philemon. And it says, I'm going to read this little excerpt, which says, Does Christian brotherly love really work? Even in situations of extraordinary tension and difficulty. Ooh, I believe this is going to minister to someone today. Will it work, for example, between a prominent slave owner to and one of his runaway slaves. Paul has no doubt. He writes a postcard to Philemon, his beloved brother and fellow worker on behalf of Onesimus, a deserter, thief, and formerly 
formerly worthless slave, but now Philemon's brother in Christ. This should give you some context of what we're reading. With much tact and tenderness, Paul asks Philemon to receive Onesimus back with the same gentleness with which he would receive Paul himself. Any debt Onesimus owes, Paul promises to make good. Knowing Philemon, Paul is confident that brotherly love and forgiveness will carry the day. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. This is good. Since this letter is addressed to Philemon in verse 1, it becomes known as Pros Philemona to Philemon. Like 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus, it is addressed to an individual. But unlike the pastoral epistles, Philemon is also addressed to a family and a church. Hallelujah. Is there echoing? Or is it just uh, for Martha? If there's echoing, can someone please let me know? Let me know if there's any type of distractions or echoing or if the music's too loud uh, I need my my admin eyes and ears please be my gauge for me is there an echo none from here okay all good yep go back out no echo Right, so I'm reading from the King James Version, and this is a prayer of thanksgiving. Prayer of thanksgiving for Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ, Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. God bless you cousins, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Da, Julia. Oh my goodness gracious. Jesus. He's restoring family. He's bringing family together. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Verse 2, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. So Paul's writing a letter to Philemon. Verse 3, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. See, they didn't have emails in those days. He had to write a letter. <laughs> well, hang on, didn't wasn't there like memos? You had to do memorandums? memos and put them in inter-office envelopes. <laughs> Gone are those days. Verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Verse 5, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. Verse 6, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing, hallelujah, which is in you, in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, for we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Amen. Verse 8, She meant she can hear you all the way from Pai. Ah, oh, it's a spiritual echo. I got it. Hallelujah. 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 Receive that. Verse 8. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient. 9. Yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. 
10, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Verse 12, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels. 13, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. 14. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. 15. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. 16. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Verse 17. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. 18. If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee the ought, put that on mine account. 19. I have written it with mine own hand, I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me, even thine own self besides. 20. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord, refresh my bowels in the Lord. 21. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou would also do more than I see. 22. But withal prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. 23. There salute thee, Ephrus, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. 24. Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, and my fellow laborers. 25. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with your spirit. Amen. I mean, so let me break it all down for you guys very simply. Well, I'll try to do my best. So Paul was addressing Philemon and also to Aphia and Archippus, fellow soldier, and to the church in the house. Shatakarabasate. Let me try and set this up properly. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's self-explanatory. I love how he's always extending grace and peace. When God uh, sends you, you go with grace. Mm. When God sends you, you go with peace. Because that to which God sends, he sends for a purpose. When God sends you, he sends you for a purpose. That there is a reasoning behind the sending. Apostle, it means to be sent. Apostle means to be sent. And so he says, verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of the always in my prayer. So this verse 4 really replicates a posture of prayer. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. And so he says, I thank my God. I always thank my God as I remember you and prayer. So notice that when you pray, there's also an attitude of gratitude. When you pray, there's also an attitude of gratitude. So the Lord would say, hey, be anxious for nothing. And instead by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Be anxious for nothing, but instead prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. So Whenever we are called to pray, it's a it's an art of gratitude. It's an art of thanksgiving unto the Lord. It's it's you cannot pray without having thanksgiving. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so that posture of thanksgiving again, it 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 releases a posture of humility. Because when you have a posture of gratitude. You remind yourself of what the Lord has done, and so therefore you're positioned to be conditioned to pray and give thanks to God as you let all your requests be made known to God. So he was always making mention of them. He always remembered them in prayers. And let me encourage you, when you pray, Ask the Holy Spirit to bring into your remembrance that whom you should pray for. Have you ever noticed that 
you might be about your way doing whatever God's asked you to do. You might be even be in prayer and then God will put someone on your heart. God will put something in your spirit. Now there's a reason for that because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our best friend. He is our comforter, our counselor, he's our advocate, he's our intercessor, he's on standby, he's always ready and willing to move if we allow him. So when you open up yourself to the realms of the Holy Spirit, when you are led by the Spirit of God, you are the sons of God. So entering into that place of being led by His Spirit and not by your emotions, you will find yourself conducive to the very things that He wants you to pray. Remember, Hara Shatakara. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit says He is our intercessor. That means when you are in the spiritual realm, you might have a list of prayer requests unto God, but the Holy Spirit would say, I don't actually want you to pray about that. I want you to pray about this. Who's ever recognized that? I want you to pray about this because my spirit is on this thing. I know you had a plan. I know you had a plan to pray for these things. And that's good, right? He says, let all your requests be made known to God. So God knows that we have requests and he knows them. The thing is this, he already knows them before we even tell him because he's the God who created us. But this says, let all your requests be made known to God. God already knows this, but he wants you to know it. Mm -hmm. He wants you to know it. And he what he's saying, let all your requests be made known to God. That means he is inviting you. It's an invitation for you to open your mouth and to lift up that to him. He wants you to pray. That's what he says. Let all your requests be made known to God. God already knows those requests, but he wants you to partner with him and say, come in here and share with me what you want to say. He's trying to get you to talk to him. That's what he's saying. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? He's trying to get you to talk to him. He's trying to get you to communicate. Now God already knows. And the peace of God the peace of God, remember we've had the peace of God drop on this room, that surpasses all understanding. So it, it it just, everything just disappears because there's peace. Have you noticed that when the peace of God comes, you don't have a worry in the world. Everything that you carried or you came in with doesn't matter anymore. It's gone. <laughs> That's what his presence does. That's what his peace does. It removes every re reminder of the world. So he's trying to not let you be conformed to the patterns of this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can you transform the renewing of your mind? Get into a posture and an atmosphere of his presence. Change the realms. If there is a, 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 a fight in your house, worship. You can shift the spiritual atmosphere. You have the dominion and authority to change atmospheres. Oof, I'm going to prophesy to someone right now. You carrying the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, have the dominion and the authority to shift atmospheres, to shift spiritual atmospheres. So if your house might be feeling uh, filled with a spirit of depression, you who carries the Spirit of God are able to release the light of the world, are able to release His presence. So when you carry His glory, you release it. And what happens is when His presence is released, anointing is released, His peace that surpasses all understanding. It guards your heart. It guards your mind in Christ Jesus. He goes past your, your prayer list. That's it. And he brings you to his divine plan. So now that God's got you positioned, now he's going to have you conditioned to his will. Mm -hmm. Now that God has you positioned, he's then going to have you conditioned to his will. Because there is our will and there's his will and there's his perfect will. Mm. Can I go there? His perfect will. His perfect will. I need to get scriptures so that you guys know that I'm not making this up. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not making this up. His good and perfect will. Let me pull up that scripture very quickly before I move on. Shata Karaba City. Stay with me, fam. Huh. 
Okay. So he says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. This is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So when you're in alignment with God's will, it is good. When you're in alignment with God's will, it is perfect. When you're in alignment with God's will, it is pleasing. So God himself, as you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, as you are here, because in order to cure the soul, we must read the word. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. In order to cure that, we must meditate on the word because the word of God is alive, it's active, it's quick and sharp, it's powerful, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing your soul and your spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And when he says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. So if you, if you, if you are still bound in some patterns of the, the world, you are still being transformed you are still being renewed in your mind so we find that there's a struggle if you're struggling with some things some things that you were conformed to before you became a Christian and that takes time some people it's quick because God has a purpose for that sometimes he will accelerate some people but sometimes it's a lot longer for others it doesn't make the one who's accelerated any better no it's because it's his will I, I, we're catching this because I just want to free people who may not be growing as quickly as others. I want to free you from that. I want to free you from that spirit of comparison that would have you see someone else who's a brand new Christian come in and you see them accelerated and used by God. I want you to free, free you from that because there's a purpose behind that. And there's a purpose behind your process of being sanctified and that time it takes, however long it takes, it doesn't make you any less or any better. God has no favorites. We are all equal to him. He sees us. He sees his son. Hallelujah. Who's encouraged by this? Some people might compare themselves to someone else. Well, how, man, how come I've been a Christian for like 15 years? And then someone who comes in 15 minutes and, and now they're releasing the heart of and they're casting out demons. How come? How come? Don't get lost in that. Don't get lost in that. It's, it's stay in your lane, family. Stay in your lane. There ain't no traffic in your own lane. But you want to get in someone else's lane. There's a lot of traffic. You're going to have a head-on collision. Don't go there. <laughs> so it says as you renew your mind and you do that through reading of the word you do that by coming here but those people who struggle to read the bible daily bread oh look i am no theologian i'm not a philosopher i'm from kawaro and i love jesus that's who i am i'm in kawaro and i love jesus so i i i uh, I have a relationship with God. Do I know? Do I know everything? No, I don't. I don't know everything. If I don't know the answer to something, I'll tell you. I'm like, actually, I don't know the answer to that. I'm, I'm quite happy to say that. I will tell you, <laughs> um, and not try and make something up. But he says, then you will be able to test and prove. So as you renew your mind, family, he says, then you will be able to test and prove what is God's will? What is his good, pleasing and perfect will? So that we know that when we come into the will of God, there's actually levels. There's his good will, his pleasing will, and there's his perfect will. Ooh. His good pleasing and perfect will am i making sense hmm. so he was constantly giving them thanks for them in his prayers he had an attitude of gratitude verse 5 
comparison can pop 100%. It happens to every, everybody. <coughs> Verse 5, hearing of thy love and faith. Verse 5 is about uh, uh, faith. Hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. So he is hearing about their love for all of his holy people and faith in the Lord Jesus. Isn't it interesting how one can hear about one's love? It's one thing to see, see the love of Jesus and see the faith that can come through our faith in him. But it's another to hear of it. Because when you hear of it, that means God is using you. Am I making sense? When you hear of someone's love, when you hear of someone's faith, that is evidence that God is elevating someone. When you see it, it means that God is preparing someone. But when you hear about it, he's elevating them. Because then everyone wants to hear it. Everyone hears about it, and then the word goes out. They're like, hey, did you hear about this? Verse 6. That the communication of thy faith it may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus so he is praying and he's hearing about the love and the faith that they had in Jesus right and he's praying that the communication that the partnership that they had may become effectual that it may be effective <clears throat> when you're in christ everything you do is effective because he is perfect become effectual by the acknowledging so you can only be effective in christ when you acknowledge every good thing <laughs> You can only become effective in Christ by acknowledging every good thing. How can we acknowledge every good thing? We give thanks. You can also give thanks and acknowledge God through your actions. You can also give thanks and acknowledge God through your words, through your posture, through the way you serve God. You are acknowledging God. You're acknowledging every good thing. And it says, which is in you, which is in you in Christ Jesus. So it's impossible to be effective and it's impossible to acknowledge the good work of God if he is not in you. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's impossible for you to be effective and it's impossible for you to acknowledge every good thing if he is not in you. But if Christ is in you, the hope of glory, then you will find yourself effectively communicating to others you will find yourself acknowledging god for every good thing you'll find yourself sharing the testimony so that is a sign and a wonder that he is inside you it's impossible to contain jesus when jesus is alive in you if you agree with me hit me with fire emoji Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. We receive it too. It's impossible to contain your love for Jesus when he is alive in you. So we acknowledge every good thing. We become effective in the body of Christ. Now, when God sends you, he wants you to be effective to the point where you have wisdom, you have understanding, you have knowledge. Effectiveness is key. And I hear that even when I've been ministering, the Lord said to me, and he says this often, he says, my daughter, I am always doing so much more than you realize. <clears throat> he says, I'm always doing so much more 
than you realize. And that encouraged me because you might do a work for God, a good work, and be effective, but you might not see the fruit in the natural. You might not hear of the effects of the good work because of Christ in you. But I want to encourage someone today. You may not see the fruit, but behind the scenes, I can guarantee you, God is doing so much more through you than you know. When Christ is in you, you are effective. When Christ is in you, you are fervent. When Christ is in you, you acknowledge him in every good thing because he is in you. You carry his spirit. And when you carry his spirit, you don't have to try to be like Jesus. You're just Jesus. <laughs> am, I, am I speaking yes. to Because some people would try to be like Jesus. And, and it becomes self-righteous. It, it becomes them trying to do something when really God's like, can you just have a relationship with me? Can you just trust me? Can you just be still and know that I'm God? Because in your weakness, I am made strong. And your weakness and your my grace is sufficient for you. So it's like God is even telling Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. So God is saying, let him be God. His grace is enough. It's all you need. And that in of itself is pretty effective because Christ is in you. Am I? I hope I'm making sense. I'm making sense. Making sense. Okay, okay. I'm making sentences. <laughs> because 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says this. It says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength. Hey, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yesterday, you would have heard a testimony that I shared about um, envy and jealousy. and What I went through recently, a couple of years back with Apostle Catherine Crick. I allowed God to be glorified in my infirmity. <laughs> that would, that I see that to be an infirmity because it's not pure, right? So he said here, because I trust his word. So I'm like, well, if I have impurities, God is glorified in that impurity because his grace is sufficient in my weakness. And he says, I would rather, the possible said, I would rather glory in my infirmities that Christ's power will rest upon me. So when you surrender yourself to that pride, when you admit that you can make mistakes, huh? Christ's power rests upon you. He anoints you. Mm, come on. He anoints you. He anoints you when you can humble yourself and say, hey, you know what? I'm not perfect. I messed up. I went through this as well. You glory in your infirmity so that Christ's power may rest upon you. So if you want the anointing, you need to reassure yourself and know that, hey, you know what? His grace is sufficient. And even when I mess up, even when I'm doing the things wrong, even when I don't do things right in the eyes of God, I am letting him glory in me because his power is resting upon me. Because what happens is that the anointing comes. And I was watching the replay yesterday and it was ministering to me and I was the one that spoke it, but it was the Holy Spirit that spoke it through me. And it touched my spirit and I was like, wow, this is actually setting people free. Am I making sense? We glorify his name through our weaknesses and his power rests upon us. And it's because when his power rests upon you, it means that you have surrendered yourself so much that he has to he has to be increased. We must decrease, he must increase. So as you allow him through your infirmities, because that's effective in the kingdom. Am I making sense? That's effective. That's a good work because he's in you. Uh, I pray I'm even making sense. Sometimes I, I think I've talked my way out of it, but I think I've stayed in it long enough. But God wants you to know that his grace is sufficient. Glory in your weaknesses, family. 
Christ wants to release his power. You want power from God? Glory in your weaknesses. Glory in your infirmities. Come on. Give him glory and say, hey, you know what? I know if the moment you, you, you're strong, he can't use you. <laughs> if, if you want to come all up in here and be strong, nah, I'm, I'm tough, I'm good, I'm strong. God's like, um, my grace is sufficient in your weakness and you're so strong right now, I can't release you grace. Mm-hmm. If you want to be strong, go ahead and be strong, but there's no grace. He says, God extends grace to the who? Not the strong. To the humble. If you want God's grace, if you want Christ's power, (laughs) glory in your infirmities, humble yourself. That is conducive to God releasing what he said he would do because he wrote it in his word. He spoke it in his word. He is the word. He is God. He is I am, not I was or I might be. He's not the I might be or I could be, or I shall be. He is I am. Man, that's a new one. He is the great I am, not the great I might be. Because you've made it all about you. But if you want to make it about Christ, I'm telling you, he will anoint you for service. He will anoint you. He will anoint your words. He will anoint every place you go because all he can see is his son that is so humble that he increases grace. You need grace. We need grace. I need grace. Don't be so strong that God can't use you. (laughs) Don't, Don't be so strong that God can't use you. I'm telling you, family, this is Bible. I'm just here just to unpack the Bible. All communication of thy faith may become effectual, effective by the acknowledging of every good work, every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the great I am, not the great I might be. <laughs> Thank you for noting that. I'll add that to my book of quotes. <laughs> He's not a has-been either. He is an I am. Verse 7. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love. Your love has given me great joy. Consolation means encouragement. In thy love. Because you. And it says because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. He's When it talks about bowels in the King James Version, he's talking about your heart. Okay? Not about the bowels. So the Bible says bowels, but it's actually out of your heart. And heart can also be interpreted as spirit. Out of your what? Belly shall flow rivers of living water. (laughs) Be humble. Sit down. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So faith comes from hearing. And hearing the word of God. So it comes in, you hear it. You hear the word of God. Then you meditate on it. You think about it. Some people think too much. (laughs) Am I speaking to somebody? Some people think too much. They get caught up in their soul. The mind, if you are bound in your mind and your thoughts, it's your soul. Your soul is trying to consume your thoughts but the bible says be renewed by the transforming of your mind you can only be transformed your mind by meditating on his word if you're meditating on your thoughts it can actually it can cause you a lot of confusion it can cause um heaviness it can cause sickness unnecessarily And God says, take captive of every thought. So that means you need to catch that thought and think, well, is this me? Is this God or is it the devil? (coughs) That's how you test it. How do you know if it's God or not? Well, is it in his word? If it's not in his word, if those thoughts that you have are not in his word, then that is not God. It's either the devil speaking, trying to get into your head, or it's your flesh. 
Yeah. So faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. So we meditate, we think about it, and we need to ponder on the word. We say la, we think about it. And then we digest it. We like chew on it, you know? You you meditate on it. You chew on it. You're like, hmm, okay, this, man, this is good. Mm, that's why it feels like good. And then what you do is you swallow it. And, and, and food and the natural in our body when you swallow something it travels through the body so it's like when you and I hear the word of God it travels through the body of Christ I'm, I'm making sense it comes into your heart it changes your heart then it comes down into your belly your spirit out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So it becomes a Logos word, a written word. And then in order for it to become a Rhema word, a living word, it must come out of the belly. You must have digested it. You must hear it first. Think about it. Say la. Meditate on it. Then you digest it. And then you swallow it. <laughs> That's why you have a really good kai kai. Because you've got to eat it. You, is this a good breakfast? <laughs> you've got to eat it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. good. And in order to see that the Lord is good, you've got to taste it. <laughs> in order to taste it, you've got to hear it. <laughs> I pray I'm making some sense. Down into your puku. And then in that place, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So that logos word that written word now becomes alive the word can only come alive if you have it coming deep into your spirit come on the word becomes alive when you receive it in your belly because out of your belly your spirit shall flow rivers of living water so you can be a manifestation of God's word you can be a manifestation of Jesus come on catch this if you're catching me if you're with me hit me a fire emoji out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water it becomes a living word God sees you and you become a living sacrifice so everything that you do you're like wow she walks like Jesus he talks like Jesus he even sounds like Jesus and it's not because you're trying, it's because that's who you are. If he is the great I am, you become too. You become like him because you're made in his image. You become like Christ because you're made in his image. And to be made in his image, it means that you are conformed to even his character. You need to eat the word and digest it. It needs to digest. That means it needs to take time. Have you, have you ever been with someone who eats their food too quickly? I have, that's me, because I love eating fast because I get really hungry. But if you see someone who eats their food too quickly, sometimes you can get indigestion. Because you're trying to speed up... Uh, I need to sit down. You're trying to speed up the process. Sometimes you need to chew on it and take time. You know, when a cow chews, he's like this. And he chews on it for ages. I know, I used to watch cows eat grass. <laughs> I'm from New Zealand. But we need to chew on the cud. We need to chew on it. Don't be so quick to swallow it. Because maybe you're going to miss it. I hope that makes sense. You, you, can, you can get a good word, but if you swallow it too soon, God's like, oh man, I wanted you to die. I really wanted you to meditate on that thing. Just uh, taste taste and see that the Lord is good God wants you to God want, okay yes Bonnie eats fast Trisha eats fast be a cow <laughs> I watch cows eat grass mm -hmm. and you know what I learned a lot too because <laughs> now God said I work all things for the good one day you're going to preach about this I didn't know that <laughs> But there's a reason why, because I noticed that they just, yes, they regurgitate it too, because it's it has to break itself down before it enters into your belly. That's why you chew on it. Oh, come on. There are many layers. And so what happens here is that as you taste, I'm, I'm stay with me here, okay? 
as you taste and see that the Lord is good, what happens is revelation comes. Because there are layers of revelation that can only come as you meditate. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sometimes I say things, I'm like, whoa. It, the, 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 the revelations, the layers of revelations of the Bible, this is more than just information. It becomes transformation as you receive revelation. Because the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. And so there's so much more to the word than what we see and what we know. There's so much more to Jesus than what we see and what we know. And you can only become like Christ when you meditate. I've been, we've been traveling around and we've just been reading parts of the word and then I would, well, I would unpack the word and I'll just get a revelation and share it with brother Sonny. He's like, wow, I can't write that down. I don't, I can't take notes. I'm like, it's okay. It's all good. But as we begin to truly meditate on the word, we taste uh, ta and you're tasting it with the love of Jesus and the, him inside of you the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance all things that have been taught to you the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance even the things in the word that you may not even know of I'll be eating my steak and thinking of this every time <laughs> okay <laughs> man you guys are funny <laughs> uh, so what I want to say is because the bowels of the saints are refreshed so apostle paul said hey your love has given me great joy it's an encouragement because you brother philemon have refreshed the hearts of the lord's people so apostle paul was encouraging him you've refreshed the hearts of people the bowels out of your belly i know i digress a lot with some things but uh i know i know it ministers to many and it brings understanding We've got 25 minutes, okay. <coughs> Verse 8, Wherefore, though I might be which bold, much bold in Christ to enjoin thee, which is convenient. So this is the petition of Paul. Everyone's having steak today. <laughs> ah. Though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee, which is so convenient. So therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do. Verse 9. Yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being as such as one as Paul the age, and now also prison of Christ. So here's, yet I'd rather appeal to you on the basis of love. So his plea to Onesimus, let me find out Onesimus' name meaning. find it. Onesimus. Useful, profitable, beneficial. Useful, profitable, beneficial. Useful, profitable, Beneficial. Remember, this is the petition of Paul to Onesimus. And so he would say, he plead to him. He said, I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do. But he said, look, I, I just, he just wanted to appeal to him in love. So Apostle Paul had the wisdom to discern what was actually going to help Onesimus. Let us be ones to discern the strategy from heaven rather than what we think. Verse 10, I beseech thee for thy son Anonymous, whom I have begotten in my bonds. <clears throat> so he appeals to him who became his son while he was in chains. Isn't it interesting how Apostle Paul birth children spiritual sons and daughters while he was bound in chains but he was bound in chains because of his love for Christ it wasn't the, the bondage that we see in the world if there's anyone who want to be bound in and for it's for Christ so he became a son the one who was profitable useful became his son while he was in chains 
verse 11, which in time past was to the unprofitable, but now profitable to the me. Isn't it interesting how he's talking about how more profitable yet his name is useful and his name is profitable? <laughs> are, you, are you guys seeing this? He's actually writing. And I, I, I actually wonder if, if Apostle Paul knew that Anisimus' name meant profitable and useful and beneficial. When he's actually writing, this is in verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable but now profitable to thee and to me. So notice that even when we did the um, introductions in the Love Like Jesus Discipleship, and we asked for everyone's names and, and to look and uh, ask Uncle Goo or Auntie Wiki about our, our name, our biblical names and meeting, and, and it's, it's opened up. Uh, it's like God has stirred up that which he created you to be, even your name. He says, I have called you by name, you are mine. So there's a plan and the reasoning for your name. God is going to minister to people through your name. Saul was Saul before he came Paul. Saul means to be prayed for. Paul means small and humble. Can you see how that happened? <laughs> Hallelujah. So he was talking about Onesimus, not actually realizing that what he was talking about was being unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and me. I just wonder if Apostle Paul knew the meaning of his name. That's all I'm trying to say. But God did. Verse 12, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is mine own vow. So I am sending him. So verse 11, he was like, formerly he was useless, you know. But now he's become useful. He's become useful to you and me. So only in Christ can we be beneficial. Only in Christ can we be profitable. Only in Christ can we be useful. Am I making sense? Verse 12, he says, I'm sending him who is my heart, very heart, back to you. So there was an assignment. He's sending him his back to his very heart. He talks about that. This is my own bowels. When God sends you, it's the heart of him. The heart of the Father is that he might send you so that you might be profitable and useful and beneficial to all that he sends you to. Kerabashata Karama Sunday. Hallelujah. God bless you, Tamati. God bless you. Oh, I was Apostle Cat on. I didn't see. Hello. Hello. Oh, he's talking to me. Okay, sorry. I thought you were talking to someone else. That was Pastor Cat. Hello. <laughs> oh, I'm always thinking about others and not me. <laughs> oh, he's talking to me. Verse 13, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. So what he's saying here is that I would have liked to have keep him with me, so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains <coughs> for the gospel. I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me. So Apostle Paul recognizes that he, whilst he was in chains, he could have kept him to himself, but he recognized that there was a purpose for him. So he sent him. So it's like God. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 12 is like representing God. God sent him, Jesus, his son, back to the earth. Paul did the same with Onesimus. Are you guys catching him? To be useful, profitable, beneficial for all mankind. Are you with me? Hit me fire emoji. I would have liked to have keep him with me so that I could take your place and help him while I'm in chains for the gospel. Apostle Paul recognized that he what he wanted to keep him. He, he could have been selfish, but he wasn't. When, when you're in Christ, it doesn't become about you no more. It becomes about others. It becomes about you recognizing that there are people who need what you carry. It becomes, it becomes a place where you recognize that even though you could be ministered to or you, you could have it for self-gain, God wants to use that to, to minister to others. Shatakaraba Sunday. 
verse 14, but without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. So he didn't want to do anything without his consent, so that any favor would be would not seem forced, but voluntary. So he, he did it because of love. Verse 15, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. So, and then he's sort of writing, you can see Paul pondering as he's writing this letter. He's like, well, perhaps the reason I was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. Perhaps there's a reason why God would separate you from, from him, which happened in the world before we came back to him. Am I, am, am I losing people? Am I... Am I losing you guys a bit? I feel like I am. Oh no, I'm not. Sin separates us from God. But grace connects us to God. We are saved by grace through faith. We are not saved by works. Unfortunately, what can happen is we can get saved by grace through faith. And then we find as we enter into this faith, into this new journey, we can get caught up in legalism. We can get caught up in self-righteousness. Don't be that guy. I, I actually went through it myself because I tried so hard to please God. I was a brand new Christian. I was um, born again in 20th July, 2014. And then I came into a season where I discovered that I wanted to do Bible college. I left my left my job. I don't recommend this at home, okay? It must be led by the Spirit. But I went to Bible college and I didn't know why I was doing it, but I just knew I had the pull to go and, and learn more about God. And it wasn't anything that was I was forced into doing. It was something that I desired to do. God had placed that desire in my heart. Sin separates us from God, but grace connects us to God. And so that we are not saved by works, we are saved by grace through faith. If ever a time you find yourself trying to please God, and you're, you're, actually, burning the, you're actually burning the candles at both ends, that's self-righteousness. When you are ministering to God, when you are a servant of God, he will anoint you with supernatural strength. Uh, for some, I haven't had very little sleep since I've been here. Very, very little sleep, but I seem to have the supernatural strength. Because when you are sent by God and ministered, ministering unto God, He gives you that supernatural strength. When you find yourself getting weary and tired, you've stepped into the realms of yourself. God wants you to rest in Jesus. When you rest in Jesus, there's so much peace. I'm, I'm telling you from experience. There is a peace and you're not stressed. You're like, I, I can't even remember the last time I was stressed. I don't even know that word was, exists. I actually, I actually don't get stressed. You've spent time with me. Have you ever seen me stressed? Ever. Hi. It's the electricity. It's the spirit of God. I never stress out. I just don't. It's not even a part of my DNA anymore. To be stressed means that you've put hope in yourself and not in God. It's giving supernatural strength. Amen, Cousin Kizza. We're going to come see you this afternoon. Thank you for preparing the home for everyone. I know you've been doing a lot of mahi. Yes, find rest in him. Rest in Jesus. Rest in Jesus. There is a peace, I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus. So, verse 16. But now is a servant, but above a servant. A brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So he said, perhaps the reason he was separated from him for a while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave as a dear brother. So 
And he says he's very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. Praise God. So we're no longer slaves to fear. We're no longer slaves to the world. When you become and you receive, when you receive God and receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you, be, you become a friend of God. You're not a slave to the world. You're not a slave to the system. You're a friend of God. You become a, a son and daughter of God. You become a brother. You become a brethren of God. You become, you become a, a one that receives the inheritance of God. You become, you receive his inheritance. It's, it's stored up for you. And then the promises of Paul, from Paul to Philemon, verse 17. If thou count me, therefore, as a partner, receive him as myself. So, so if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. So he's petitioning here. Welcome him as you would welcome me. Verse 18. If he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. If he has done anything wrong, or if he owes you anything, charge it to me. Can you see how Apostle Paul... He is willing to back that whom he speaks of and sins. He is willing to, to pay the, see, see how he's willing to pay the price. It's like Paul is a representation of Christ. It's like God has already paid the price. So he's saying, if, verse 18, if he's done anything, any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. God's saying, if you do anything wrong, if you do anything wrong, if you owe anyone anything, give it to me. I paid the price. You might mess up. You might fall short. You might think there's no way God's going to forgive me because I sinned so much. I did this. I did this really. I'm, I'm so far from God. God's like, I have already paid the price. Give it to me. If there's any wrongdoing, anything at all, give it to me. I, I sense I'm speaking to somebody here. Apostle Paul said, if you consider me a partner, if you consider me his, remember, charge it to me. God is saying, charge it to me. Charge it on my account because the account has been paid for. Oof. The debt has been paid. If you do anything wrong or if there's anything owing, if you owe something to somebody, give it to God. He's paid the price. Put that on mine accounts. God's saying, my son, my daughter, that thing where that's, that's actually keep you bound, that thing that's shackling you, that's keeping you bound, I actually want to set you free from that because I want you to charge it to me. Put it on my account, says the Lord. Put it on my account, says the Lord. You don't need to pay that price. I've paid it. You don't need to pay the fine. The wages of sin is death. I'm death. I'm the one who died so that I'm the one who rose again. He became death so that we might live. Does this make sense? There was a debt. When there is a debt, there was a death. When there is a debt, there is a death. So there was a debt that God had recognized that man had caused the sin, caused us to be in debt. Because the root word of death, debt actually, debt is death. So it's like the debt was there, but it's the debt's been paid and it's paid through death Christ paid the price he died he rose again so maybe you are in financial debt I want to prophesy to you right now Christ has paid the price so that you no longer need to be in financial debt Maybe you feel like you're in spiritual debt where you don't feel like you're where you, where you should be or you've backslidden and now you're only just coming back. That debt has been paid. Oh, I'm telling you. It's paid. God's paid the price. You no longer need to be in financial debt. If your bank accounts are in a negative, let me prophesy to you right now. God's paid the price. It is not your, his, your portion to be in debt. It is not your portion. And I feel I'm speaking to a lot of people right now. If you've been struggling financially, this is just an example. God's paid the price. He says he wants you to prosper even as though your soul prospers. 
So if your soul prospers, that means everything about you prospers. The only way your soul can prosper is through the word. The cure to your soul is the word. The cure to your soul is the word. He wants your soul to prosper through the word, through Jesus. And so when your soul prospers, when your mind and your will and your emotions prosper in Christ, he then increases the anointing. And as the anointing increases inside of you, wealth is attracted to you. You become valuable in the kingdom of God because you have been not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The more, let me say this, the more you become like Jesus, you attract wealth. You attract the riches of heaven, the riches on earth. You attract it. It's a byproduct of being anointed by God. You sip the wealth. You become a person of value because you are a person of Christ, of Jesus. And therefore, the world will pay you to be who you are. Am I, am I making sense? I don't want you to get this all twisted too because it's not about money. But what I'm trying to give you an example is that when you become more like Christ, he then prospers you. You become someone who's richly blessed in every area of your life. So if you are struggling financially, this is a spiritual representation of yourself and the spirit. So God wants you to know who you are. And so as you grow in Christ, what happens is that the anointing increases inside of you. Wealth is attracted to you. Wealth of knowledge, not just money, wealth of understanding, wealth of wisdom, wealth of maturity, wealth of, 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 of growth. It, you, there, there are so many ways in which we can increase wealth. You can increase wealth in your health. You can increase wealth in uh, knowledge, the knowledge of God. You can increase your wealth in the wisdom of God. You can increase your wealth in every area of your life. It's not just finances. People think it's moment, the moment you say wealth, they just think of money. But biblically, it's, it's God wants you to prosper in all things. So there's this wealth. Am I making sense? Oh, I pray I am. Shetakaraba. And so the dictionary, it actually says wealth is a plentiful, a plentiful supply of a particular desirable thing. Ooh. Wealth means it's a plentiful supply. It's an abundant supply of a particular desirable thing. So if you desire to be one who has so much wisdom, you can actually have the wealth of wisdom. It's not referring to just possessions or money. It's actually referring to something that is desirable. And as you delight in the Lord with all of your heart, God gives you the desires of your heart. So you can actually increase in wealth because God's desires, if you, as you have delighted yourself in Him, He increases those desires in you. That is wealth. Wealth is of a desirable thing. Wealth comes of a desirable thing. And if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will put the desires in your heart, His desires, His will in your heart. That is wealth. So as you become more like Jesus, you attract the wealth. You attract the wealth of wisdom. Jesus, Luke chapter 2 verse 52, it says, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. So Jesus himself had to grow too. And Jesus would always ask questions. He would go to the synagogues and actually go and ask some questions. He'd sit there and then this is what his parents were like, Oh, where's Jesus? We can't find Jesus. And he's like, did you not know I was in my father's house? He was there because he wanted to ask questions. He was just interested. Jesus recognized that he had to learn too. And he was learning. He humbled himself to recognize that, hey, I don't know everything. 
Remember, God didn't anoint him till he was baptized and he came up out of the water. And the first time God spoke to him, he said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That's when God recognized him. Are you, say, are you hearing this? He had to live life for 30 years just like everybody else. He had to learn. He had to go to work like everyone else. <laughs> so if you complain about job, guess what? Jesus had to go to work too. He had a mum and a dad. He had brothers. His brothers didn't even like him. <laughs> so Jesus had to live the life that we did. So he would seek and go to the synagogues and actually ask questions. He would sit with the well-learned, the, the, the philosophers and the, and the Pharisees and all that. He would ask questions because he was like, you know, oh, wow, wow, wow. And he was learning. He humbled himself. He, did, he recognized that, hey, I need to go. Did you know it was in my father's house that time? <laughs> okay, I'll keep moving. It's uh, one more minute. Okay. So he says, verse 20. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels on the Lord. So he's saying, refresh me. Refresh me. Refresh my heart in Christ. So if you are of benefit, if you are an Onesimus, you are profitable, and if you are useful, you will bring a uh, refreshing to people. That's what verse 20 means. You find joy in him and you refresh others because of how effective you are in the good works of Christ. Verse 21. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. So confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. Hallelujah. Verse 22. This is a posture of prayer. And one thing more. Prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you and answer to your prayers. And I can just see, this is Paul, when he writes this whole letter, he's actually representing Christ himself, how he's saying, you know what, prepare a room for me, prepare a place for me. Because he hopes to be restored, 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 in answer to prayers, in answer to your prayers. Remember he says, that I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. God wants to restore us to him through our prayers. And you're probably wondering, yeah, but we're already restored. Yes, we are, but we need to know it. God knows it, but you don't. Did anyone catch that? We, because we're humans, to know that we're restored to him, we need to have relationship. How do we have relationship? You talk to them. I cannot have a relationship with my brothers here um, if I do not talk to them. <laughs> if I said nothing, that's not much of a relationship, is it? So prayer is a posture of communicating with our God. Not just the list. It's a, it's a way in which you can talk and he can listen and he can talk and you can listen. Prayer is a two-way street. Prayer isn't just you all talking and God not getting a word. And God's like, okay, so when you meditate on my word, when you come pray to me, are you going to pray and actually listen to what I say? Do you go to God and say, hey, God, you know, yes, and you lift up your request, you make note to God, and you, you give him all those things, and then the Holy Spirit shows you this and this and this. But are you allowing God to speak to you when you pray? What is God saying? What is he saying to you? Prayer is almost always a place for you to hear what God is saying than it is about you saying what you need to say. <laughs> what would you say? That's what oh, that's what happens to Papa. He's just admitted it. Right, so we need to listen. So he says, prepare a room for me, so that your prayers and I shall be given unto you. Verse 30, 23, there salute the Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ, 24, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers, grace the Lord of our Jesus Christ be your spirit, amen. I 
I felt like I was a little bit all over the place this morning, but I always seem to make sense from the feedback that I get. So I'm just going to trust God in that. Um, and this is what happens when you let down the safety barriers. <laughs> you don't prepare, uh, you prepare your hearts. Catherine Kilmer said, I never prepare myself, I always stay prepared. Be prepared for what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And if the Holy Spirit is truly in you, you will abide in Him. You will bring it back to His Word. You will bring it back to Him. Give Him all the glory. Amen. Let us pray. Let's play a song, brother. Just goodness of God. So, Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. It was fabulous. Okay, that's good. I never really know. Father, I thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. New Zealand here, Love Like Jesus Discipleship, you are invited to come for a, uh, a home meeting, which is going to be extremely powerful. I've had many people ask me for my itinerary, and I have turned them down and said, no, 
I have no itinerary. I'm not doing any meetings, uh, but only for a select few. So please do keep this ministry in prayer. Please do uh, pray that no uh, attacks of the enemy mm -hmm. would come, that the few who are sent have been sent by God and not from the enemy. I've had many uh, try to destroy my ministry, <laughs> uh, but, you know, we, we trust in God. We, we thank him. Uh, so I bless you all with the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. I will see you soon. Bye. God Bye. bless. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, Creed. Hang on. I've got a puppy. Can I have a puppy? Yes, Hello. Hello. This is Creed. You're famous. Look. And he's so cute. He smells so good. He's great. Say hi. Say hi, everybody. He's got beautiful eyes. Say hi. Isn't he gorgeous? Mm-hmm. Mm. Bye. He's Creed. Ah, that's a butt yawn. That's a butt yawn. He's like, okay, can you get me off? YouTube now because you want one? He smells so cute. <laughs> Bless you, family. Love you so much. Say bye. Wanna say bye? Say bye. You wave out goodbye. <laughs> you gay? You wanna hold him? Bless you, family. You gay? It's a good day. Bye-bye.